proposal for the next generation of group plugin. In the wrong session, hopefully we get it really good. So, um, so we get it. Before we get started, just a quick unofficial and scientific survey. Who here has written a patch and thrown on a test spot? Should be everybody, right? Pretty close. Who has ever had a problem with the patch that they run on the test spot? Almost everybody. Who has written a patch specifically for the test spot? Two. Who is a past or current maintainer of the testing infrastructure? There is half a I was going to say, if anyone raised their hand there, that was my exit strategy, so you better be careful. Um, for those I haven't met before, my name is Jeremy Thorson. I am a, a Drupal hobbyist who's been using Drupal for about five years. Um, my Drupal.org profile lists my job as a long tail developer, which is to say I represent the long tail of one off freelancers and hobbyists who don't really use Drupal as their day job, but uh, just do it because we enjoy it, right? So my day job is actually in network engineering and network architecture for a Canadian telephone company uh, in, in Saskatchewan, Canada. The next line of my profile lists my job title as Drupal Testbot Cardiologist, which is to say I'm a maintainer of the test bots and do what I can to keep them running. And when problems arise, people come up and say, hey, I've got an issue, can we, can we try and solve it? The IRC bot on the Drupal Contribute channel lists me as Drupal Testbot EMT, which is incorrect. I have a day job, so I'm seldom the first person on a scene when anything goes wrong. So, prefer to think of it as more the I'll come in after the fact, do some dub troubleshooting, do some uh, bug fixing, try and solve whatever the issue might be. So I've been maintaining the automated testing infrastructure for about 14 months now. Uh, I kind of fell into the role. When I started, I didn't have any particular affinity, interest, or experience with automated testing. What I really wanted to do was list a module on Drupal.org. And that's how I found myself in the back of the project applications queue behind 449 other developers thinking there has really got to be a better way here. So being somewhat naive, I thought, we've got an automated testing infrastructure, let's use it to automate these project reviews, and I'm going to challenge myself to make that happen. I said I was a little naive. I said, oh, how hard could it be? I gave myself four weeks, and that was 16 months ago. Fortunately for the community, when I set my mind to a task, I can get extremely stubborn and bullheaded and will not give up until it is done. So, so here I am. So in terms of an agenda for the session today, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the problems that I ran into trying to get Kipper to do something different than what it was originally built for. So a little bit of discussion, some of the issues I ran into there, some of the issues that we run into as maintainers of the test body structure. And then I'm going to go into introducing two projects called Conduit and Worker, which are proposing as something to deploy as the next generation of testing infrastructure. So I'll do a little bit of history, talk about where that came from. Uh, what are the bells and whistles? What does this platform give us that other that we don't have with current infrastructure? Time permitting, and I suspect because anyone who's seen any of my proposals know I'm not, brevity is not my strong point, so we may not have time, but uh, I'll do a little bit of a plug and walk through. It's in the slides if you want to look at it as far as what it takes to build new testing functionality on this proposed platform. So there's information there and there's a little bit, some very brief code samples and stuff. And from that, talk a little bit where we are now with deployment of the platform, with development of the platform, and some of our next steps. Where do we go from here? So, I, I should point out, I, I listed this problem with Piffer, but it's a bit of a misnomer. Piffer itself was built to do one thing, and it does it very well. Um, it runs simple, set, simple test test cases. And for the most part, uh, I know everyone's running into troubles with it, but for the number of test cases that runs and the number of patches that runs every day, it does its job. Um, so when I say the problem with Piffer here, it's really the problems that I encountered trying to make Piffer do something else, trying to extend this to do things that it wasn't originally designed for. The main issue from an architectural standpoint is Piffer was originally designed with this concept of environments. We want to be able to test on MySQL, we want to be able to test in Postgres, we want to be able to test in different versions of PHP. 
so this environment concept was built into the test bots in, uh, in, the, in the, the, the existing version of the test bots. And then we turned around and we said, well, we want to do more than simple tests. We want to do these coder reviews on the test bot. And we thought, well, they've got this environment functionality. Let's use it. So instead of a, we have a My, simple test MySQL environment, and then we built a coder environment. Well, it's not really the underlying environment that we're testing on. What we're doing is we're bastardizing this environment's feature and using it to run new testing functionality. It worked well. It did what we wanted to do. Where it runs into problems is that, uh, let's say we now want to do an Drupal environment, we want to do VHAT Mink, uh, we want to do some grammar parser, some code sniffer. Pretty soon we've got seven different testing functionalities that we want to run on this test bot. Now we turn around and decide we've got all those MySQL, we want to run them in Postgres. Well, now we've got 14 environments that we're running on the test bot. Now let's try and add PHP 5.4. It's 28 environments, so it doesn't scale very well. The main issue here is that if you want to run a test on a given project, there's no way of saying, I just want to run this test on this environment today and this, and this other environment tomorrow. It's an all or nothing. So when you run a test, it runs through all of the environments that are applicable for that test. So as a result, as we scale up the number of environments, we delay how long it takes to test. Because you will not get a result back for any of those tests until all of the environments have completed successfully. And on top of that, if any one of those environments has some sort of fail <coughs> excuse me, some sort of failure where it doesn't return a result, you don't get results for any of the environments. So it's a little bit of an architectural limitation that uh, hinders us when we try to deploy new functionality on this. From a maintainer perspective, we all we have this issue of uh, stability and bugs. So when a bug's found in a test or a test fails, you got this issue. Where is it? What's the cause? Is it the testing infrastructure? Is it the project that's under test? Is it uh, simple test inside of Drupal 4? Is it just end user error? So from a maintainer perspective, it's, it's very difficult to track down where are these issues coming from. Now, that's not something we're going to solve with a new platform. But I mention it here because the problems we ran into with Kif and Kiffer, which is the, the existing infrastructure, is that we, we caught all the local hanging fruit. And what we're left with is the problems that were intermittent, random, and non-repeatable. I don't know how many of you know this, but when Drupal 8 for head fails, and someone goes in there and clicks the retest button because you can't have broken head, that wipes out all the evidence of that test and that failure, and we don't have anything left to troubleshoot why that failure occurred. So it's, it's a little bit of an issue there. And uh, we've had a bit of a tendency lately to spectacular failures and test bot breaking failures. Probably the worst example being Drupal on Denver Sprint Day, where we turned up 10 test bots, and by 9.30 in the morning, eight of them were dead. Um, now, the main result of that was test bots were running out of memory. We run the database inside of memory. We were crashing the database. The Drupal site would go offline and would not be able to spin itself back up. Fortunately, thanks to Sun, Berder, as well as a couple others, they tracked down the cause of this in simple tests last month, and we no longer have that problem. So, big kudos to them. They made my life back. I took a lot easier. So from a maintainability perspective, the other issue we've got is this concern with dependability in the midst of change. So with the push to Drupal 7, uh, Jimmy Berry, or Boomer Tower, the, uh, the author and architect of the existing system, had seen some of these limitations in the system and wanted to change them, wanted to re-architect it. And so he was busy in the midst of re-architecting the live system, moving from working one way to working another way and was asked to stop touching things because as he was adjusting the architecture, he was affecting the ability for people to test patches and that the D7 deadline was moving. So he was actually asked to step back and uh, leave things alone for a while. We're sort of in the same situation right now where we've got Drupal 8, we're pushing towards Drupal 8, we've got uh, feature fees coming up in December and now we want to develop a new testing environment. A Little bit of a challenge there. So. The current plan is we're going to leave the existing infrastructure in place, build this in parallel, so we'll have the existing sta stable infrastructure for the push to V8, 
but still have a platform that we can develop new features and new testing functionality. Um, and I will spare you my little bit of soapbox about the, the learning curve for maintainers making it hard for new people to come in. We still need new people coming in. There's not a lot of turnover or new blood ever entering the test, if the test spot issue queue. We could use a little bit of that. Um, the main reason for that is uh, complexity. There's no real single view of the code. There's no one place people can look as it is. Multiple projects, there are multiple repositories. And when you do get into it, you got sort of a complicated execution flow through the PIP project, the PIP server project, the PIP client project, the PIP Drupal project. So it is a complex beast. That also makes it very difficult to set up local testing environments. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier here about wanting um, wanting your own testbot environment. If you do want to set up a testbot for local testing, Randy Fay has done a excellent screencast on setting up your own testbot on randyfay.com. I definitely suggest people go look that up. Um, a couple other comments about the existing infrastructure. There's a lack of flexibility, which is not really Pipper's fault, but Pipper's built on project, and project is built on this concept of releases. So everything is hard-coded to release nodes right now which means we have no testing for sandboxes or feature branches or initiative branches. And that's, that was really the main driver. We want to change this. And that led us to start saying, if we can't do it here easily, maybe it's time to look at a new system. We've got hard-coded test types. So we've got branch tests and patch tests. And it's hard-coded that those are the keys of the array that's passed over to QADO. If I want to add a new test type, I have to adjust the keys that array, I have to do new code on QADO, new code on the test bot, and new code on Drupal.org. And we know it's kind of difficult to get new code deployed on Drupal.org. Um, so we have to coordinate between all three components of this architecture. And the other issue that affects flexibility is the entire system is written with direct database queries. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, so once again, we've got this high barrier of entry, which makes it difficult for new people to come in and help out with the platform. New maintainers have this very large learning curve they have to look at, and uh, most make it about 10% up that through that learning curve and then give up and move up. And of course, the test bots have a uh, relatively low profile the until they break and it's number one. Let's try to fix this now. So those, that's sort of the background of why we're looking at a new infrastructure here. Um, the proposal that uh, we've got includes two projects, uh, one called Conduit and one called Worker. Um, the architecture of this system is the same as Pipper in that we've got a scheduler or a trigger point on Drupal.org. We've got a central dispatcher, which is uh, the QA.Drupal.org. And we've got a test bot or a worker that actually executes the testing and, and logic. So what this Conduit Worker project, where it came from, once again, it was written by Boomba Tower, Jimmy Berry, who is the architect of the existing system. When he was told to back off from Drupal 7, he went out and he said, well, let's do a ground-up redesign, take into account all the current limitations of the current system, um, and let's, let's, do, let's do this again. This is his third time, his third iteration of this process, so he knew who better to know what those limitations were. So he went away, let the Drupal 7 release cycle go, and he went off on his own. And he built these two modules, uh, which, and then released them as the core of his review-driven.com proposal uh, last July. Now there's a little bit of backlash with the business model that was associated with that. But uh, talking to him at DrupalCon Denver on Sprint Day, he open sourced the code to review-driven and released it to the community so that it's now available for us to put around and deploy what he built as the next generation of testing infrastructure for use on Drupal.org. How it works, the conduit server, which is the equivalent of QADO in our current environment, hosts a st uh, an abstract structure of nested groups and jobs. So there's these groups which loosely tie, ma loosely map across the Drupal.org objects. So we've got project contains a repo group, contains a branch group, contains an issue group, contains patch groups. So you've got this tree structure which sort of maps against the objects on the level. And at each level of that tree, we can define, di define different properties. So at the repository level, we can define a property that is the git URL for that repository. Uh, throughout this presentation, I'll be talking about properties. 
probably important to note. We're talking about properties in the generic sense, not in object arrow property. Um, it's a little unfortunate that that's the terminology we use because the properties actually is a large structured array. Um, so jobs at each level then inherit the properties of each of, of that entire tree. So when you create a job at the bottom level of, the, of that tree, it inherits the properties from each of the groups above it. Now jobs can also override any of those, so it gives us some flexibility. We've got intelligent defaults in the tree, but the ability to override those properties for any individual group. Job types or new testing functionalities can then define their own properties and allow values and validation. Uh, so for example, Porter defines the review array of which reviews we want to run. Now, we don't want to hard code any assumptions into the system, similar to what we've got with Piffer, so we got this structured array, or this structured abstract tree, but custom groups, custom trees, custom jobs can also be supported. This one? Those are all individual groups. So that's just sort of the, the structure on Drupal.org that we that we also try to map inside of the QA idea. Uh, groups and jobs are, are separate. So groups can contain other groups or they can contain jobs. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about job types uh, I think on the next slide here. So within a group, in order to kick off a test of QADO, we create a job node. And the node type of that node is what defines the actual job type or, or the actual testing functionality that we want to implement. Um, when you create a node on QADO, the code creates a queue item, puts it onto a Drupal queue using Drupal 7's queuing mechanism, where it sits until a worker calls home periodically, pulls an item off the queue, and then executes the logic for that. For that. Um, so essentially, this is a job dispatcher system. Uh, it's a custom job dispatcher system. It's got a little more complexities, a lot of Drupal.org specifics, but at the root, root of it all, it's a job dispatcher. So with this particular job dispatcher, a lot of people may say, well, why don't we, why don't we use Jenkins? Why don't we use Travis? And valid questions. Some of the things that Jimmy built into this system when he first, uh, first did it give us some objects that we couldn't do with the existing infrastructure. So the first main difference is the fact that jobs are nodes. In Piffer and Piff, jobs are a row in a database table buried somewhere deep underneath the database. So when we have a problem with the test and we need to modify it or delete it, that's direct database manipulation on the radio, which is not optimal at all. So now with jobs as nodes, we get all the things that nodes bring us. We get revision support. So nodes have revisions, now jobs have revisions. Revisions have history, jobs now have history. So we run a test, we retest it, we can go back to the previous revision, see the results of that test, do our debugging, and understand what it is that uh, that may have caused the failure of the problem. We also get a user interface for CRUD operations, we get field API integration, views integration, services integration. So this is all stuff that was custom code in Piffer and Pift. We're now looking to leverage the core capabilities of Drupal 4 to simplify the volume of custom code that's in the signature. The other big benefit with jobs as nodes, there's no need to understand the underlying DB structure in order to come in and build new testing functionality or to build new, or, or to help troubleshoot tests or, or work on tests. So that broken test cleanup, I no longer have to go into QADO and delete a row from the database, or in some cases actually go onto the database in Google.org and delete a row. And my request for SSH access to be able to do that has been outstanding for six months, so just a little plug there. The other, the next thing is we've got services-based communication. Uh, Pifter and Pift used XMLRPC, sort of bringing that up into the, the next generation here, using services 
exchanging JSON objects between QADO and the workers. The other thing services give us that we, does, that we don't have with the current infrastructure is a versioned API. So now we can start enhancing the testing functionality, but not break back into compatibility with all the existing tests, which are sitting in issue queues and on QADO, that people like to go back and click and test very often. We, do, we have stayed away from certain enhancements because it would break the ability to test those existing tests and issue queues in the past. So we're better positioned for more future enhancements and third-party integration using quote-unquote standards, these more modern methods. So your neighbors are sleeping, waking up for this one. With this system, we have the ability of doing batch processing. So we can take a simple test job of 40,000 tests, break it up into, individual, into smaller chunks, and simultaneously send those chunks out to multiple test pods and process that job in parallel. So this has the potential to greatly speed up some of our simple test testing. I say right now potential because this week we have 13 bots, normally we have four. We're going to have to scale up that side of the infrastructure in order to really truly take advantage of it. But just the ability to be able to batch those is huge. On top of that, those results that are coming back from that testing are returned on a per chunk basis. So, once the first 200 tests complete and the test bot responds back, if there's a failure in those first 200 tests, you know as soon as that chunk's complete and there's no need to wait for the other 39,800 tests to complete. So, that's a, a nice benefit as well. So, I described how tests define this array of properties again using the generic term, which can be overridden for individual jobs. We've got this group structure, or this nested group abstract tree structure, which has intelligent defaults. But what we've done is removed any of the hard-coded assumptions in what's being passed to these jobs. Each property is itself an array. So when you tell a job, here is the Git URL I want you to check out, we can now check out multiple get checkouts before running a test. When you tell the worker, here's the patch I want you to apply, we can now apply multiple patches before executing the simple test test. We've also introduced a couple of generic properties. There's a setup property and a build property. And what these are, are the ability to arbitrarily to run arbitrary command execution during the pre-build and post-build cycle. So if we have a patch that's going to move all of Drupal into the core directory, we don't have to create a 2.8 meg patch. We can do a pre-build step, which is move all of, core, all of Drupal into the core directory. So um, other things you can do with this, you can execute a wget, pull down some uh, libraries or dependencies that you might have on a module, um, write your own script, include it via the patch, and execute that. So it really gives us full flexibility to do just about anything you would want during the setup cycle or after the build cycle before you kick off the simple test execution, for example, or whatever other testing functionality you might need. So another item here. The worker side of this, the test bot side of this, the job functionality, the worker functionality, and the testing functionality is defined as C tool plugins. So with Pift and Piffer, if you wanted to go figure out how a test bot worked, you had to sort through the seven layers of directory structure, find the right file for the actual worker logic. Now, if you want to go do something on the coder worker plugin, it's plugin slash coder .in. You can write a C tools plugin. You should be able to write new testing functionality on this. Plugin. All the logic for the workers contained within its own plugin. Now it's a little bit of simplification. There are a number of hooks required on the the conduit side, the QADO side, because we need to define a node type for that job. We need to define the default properties. We need to define the validation logic. Uh, we need to find the field API structure and the mapping of the results into the field API structure. But none of this is non-standard Drupal stuff. So, looking at uh, 
fingers crossed, this should give us a little bit more, this should simplify the ability for someone to come in out of the general community and contribute to the testing infrastructure with a new testing functionality or troubleshooting functionality. So, we have custom logic, we have custom properties, we have build step command execution. We're really looking at a lot more than just testing here. I position this as more of a generic framework for Drupal.org automation. And with that in mind, we're doing things, looking at how can we use this platform to do patch conflict protection. When I upload a patch, let's have the automated testing infrastructure go out, find all other patches that apply to that same, and apply them one by one and detect, here's the ones that need rerolls. Let's take it one step further. Let's then kick off another job that automatically rebases those patches. Or another job which will do automatic backports of it. So Jimmy's been quite active in trying to figure out ways he can run different sets of git commands and do some of that rebasing. So, exciting stuff. No, Jim, Jimmy unfortunately could not. So we're also looking at code quality, security reviews. Uh, I've got a plugin for the project application queue that goes in and validates your branched names and your tag names to make sure they, can, they comply with Drupal coding standards. That may sound like a really simple thing, but if you ever spent like five minutes in the project application queue, you would be amazed at how often our new project gets run. So, where are we at? supposed to wrap up in about half an hour and give lots of time for discussion, but uh, really quickly, running through a walkthrough and how you build a new plugin. There's hook install, you need to create your custom node type. If you look at the presentation online, uh, you can actually click on the code and zoom in and, and look at the actual code from an example module that we've got. Um, you've then got hook install fields, hook install instances to set up your field API for results display. You've got your default properties and validate. And then you've got hook conduit result, which is the mapping of the results that your custom SQLs plugin sent back to the field API entries on, on conduit. And then on worker, you create the SQLs plugin with the actual logic. So those are the required steps. That's what it takes to create a new testing functionality on this platform. Some optional steps. We've got uh, hooks for working with the queue items as the, that are being put on the Drupal queue object. There's hooks for uh, an init hook to help initialize some of your field API. So if you need to put placeholder values, uh, like uh, which chunk this result belongs to in, you can do some of that in the initialization hook. Uh, we've got properties alters on a job and global basis, and uh, some other hooks for executing other logic, excuse me, when a project is, when a job is finished. So the existing plugins that we get out of the box with the review-driven code as Jimmy uh, uh, released it, Conduit Execute is our sample plugin. Um, Functionality-wise, it just executes whatever command you pass it in the command key of that property array. So it's a, it's a good, simple project, a good one to look at for developing your own testing functionality. And it's really intended as an example rather than something for actual use because we also have those build steps in there and we can do this out of the box without a plugin as well. We've got Conduit Scan, which is a very simple module that simply goes into the checked out repository and tries to identify a list of all the simple test cases. It's really good for seven, and then we broke it. Uh, Conduit Plumber. And these are not my names, but uh, initially in Review Driven, there was this concept of you had Conduit, which is the thing everything flows through. You had Conduit Plumber, which runs the simple test. It was water analysis. But what Conduit Plumber is, is the simple test of Conduit. It goes out and it executes on tests. And then we've got Conduit Coder, which is a code, which is just the default coder module that we have for Piffer. And lastly, Conduit Coverage, which gives you code coverage results for simple test test runs out of the box with Conduit. Some of the items that we're now looking at developing and some of our future thoughts 
I mentioned the Git repo health check for validating your your repository tags and branches. We've got the ensure that you're not using the master branch, so on and so forth. I mentioned patch auto rebasing, conflict detec detection. Tomorrow, uh, I plan on spending an hour or two working with Patrick and Klausi and trying to get Drupal Code Sniffer working on this new platform. Uh, secure code review. Uh, we could be looking at performance testing, Google PHP unit, the hat make. The, the options are fairly endless. Again, all we need to do now is see tools, plugins that have the logic that we need and make sure that we've got things like code sniffer on, on the worker instances. So, next steps, where are we and where are we going? I freely admit that I am a giant tease because we are no near the we have a team, uh, it says here of one and a half people working on this. That's a gross overestimation. <laughs> Jimmy is dedicating his 20% time at Google to Drupal's automated testing infrastructure, which is fantastic. I mentioned earlier, I've got a day job, so I've probably got about 5% of my time I put towards this. So together we're approaching about a third of a body. And we desperately could use some help working on this, or getting this deployed. I think, I think it's fairly clear where the benefits are for this, uh, but we want more people involved in it so that we can actually make it more maintainable by the entire community as opposed to one or two people who happen to fall into the roles like I do. So we do have projects set up on Drupal.org. There's the Conduit project and the Workbook project. There's also Conduit Drupal and Worker Drupal. And where those came from is that with Review Driven, they had the generic functionality, generic framework in one set of modules, and then the Drupal-specific enhancements in another. Um, admittedly, that makes it very difficult from a discoverability point of view. We do need to look at uh, how do we really structure this project from on Drupal.org. So this is this is the default that we got it out of the review driven. Uh, we also have our dev instances set up on Drupal for Drupal structure. So we now have a conduit server that's running and two test bots in, on OSU OSL hardware. So we do have some development, community available development stuff ready for us to work with it. That happened just before I went on vacation. I haven't actually got around to running a test on that new infrastructure, but we, we do have it now there for after the conference. It's a little difficult in that the OSU OSL hardware there's all sorts of jumping through all sorts of hoops in order to get access to it, just given the nature of their environment there. But uh, it is possible to get in there and do things. And for someone who wasn't out too late last night, you might have caught on that I had three items in that slide: a scheduler, a dispatcher, and worker. And I only talked about the dispatcher and the worker. We're at the architecture design stage of our Drupal organization trying to figure out how best to architect this and, and integrate with the Drupal Um We're looking for the use cases, what are the other automation use cases that we can use, and some UI mockups and designs. How can we build a user interface for triggering a new test type on Drupal? Butter. So with that Drupal.org integration, the stuff we need is results display. We want, to use, we want to do something similar to today where you can get summarized results in Drupal.org, detailed results on radio servers, uh, user interfaces I mentioned, new use cases. And we're looking at how do we manage the communication between Drupal.org and the QADO server. So to kick off a test, we know we need to create a node on QADO. But in the existing infrastructure, we've got this issue where we've got a number of database tables are duplicated in Drupal.org and QADO. So our test table, for example, that lists all the tests. And so anytime you got that data duplication, you have to keep things in sync. And when things get out of sync between those two databases on two different servers, test products start acting really, really weird. And do things like uh, execute a test for 20 minutes, then decide they don't want to execute it again, and queuing it back up to themselves in perpetuity. So we want to avoid that data duplication. And one of the things we're looking at, which is a little, little abstract and kind of in the sky right now, is, is some concept of a custom entity controller for remote entities and then relation and entity reference or something to tie that group structure to the group.org projects and those and, and objects on, on the main site. Um, and I mentioned we need to finalize our group work structure. 
Do we do multiple projects? Do we do a single repository? How do we make this more maintainable for the community? And of course, uh, probably painted this a few times today. We need a few bodies. So that's the presentation portion. Uh, we'll get into the open the floor for questions here in a second. Before we do, if you don't get a question in here, uh, feel free to find me. I'll, I'll stick around here after or for lunch uh, after the conference. Find me in IRC as Jay Thorson. Uh, email me via my video contact page or uh, send me a note up, up on Twitter. Message me at Twitter. My contact information is there. And one last house cleaning thing, I have to give uh, a shout out to Sleepy Robot 13 who is a artist based out of Ohio in the States. Uh, that is where I got all of these little robot clay figurine pictures. And coming from a family of photographers, I have to give image credit. Um, so she did give me permission to use these images. Unfortunately, it's not extended to anyone else. So, but uh, give her an email, she'll be, she'll be glad to release them, uh, release them for you. Um, and also the customers will make sure you can go to session evaluation survey. Conference organizers would love it, and I would love it to do that as well. So please do that. And with that, we can open the floor. Stunned to silence. <laughs> yeah, please, please use the mic. So my question is. Uh, Um, I yes, uh, with the VCS property, we support Drupal.org URLs, but we also support GitHub URLs. So you can do your own projects. You need some way of creating an ODP IDO in order to kick off the test, but we have services. We, we have services uh, to do that. We can. Uh, and that version API helps us for third-party integration. So we're setting it up for third-party integration and non drupalorg use. And ReviewDriven itself is built as a project 100% for your custom use. It supported Drupal, but it supported your own projects as well. And that was the business model that they were going for. It's really a infrastructure as a service for our agents. So, so we do have technical support for that. How much of that we can build into our Drupal.org integration probably still remains to be seen. I was wondering, and I apologize if I missed this in your slides, but um, if you could comment on the potential for testing for sandboxes. Um, I know the security teams had concerns in the past about having testing for sandboxes, but for some situations like sandboxes of core that have, for example, modules that might be moved to core in them, it would be very helpful to be able to run a full automated test suite for Drupal in a sandbox without having to make it a project on Drupal.org. Yes, so the, the existing infrastructure as I mean, everything is keyed to a release NID, node ID. So in order to get Drupal.org to trigger a test over on the QA infrastructure, you pass the node ID of the release to QADO. This does not work if you do not have a release, and the security team will not allow releases on sandboxes. So, so the current infrastructure doesn't support that. With the new infrastructure, the way you tell it to do a checkout is you pass it the actual repository URL. So again, that can be a Drupal.org URL, can be a sandbox, can be a feature branch, it can be a GitHub URL, it can be a, it can be other, there's, uh, don't have them off the top, I think it's version CVS, Git, it can be other VCS types as well. So there's support for performing ones. But yeah, full support for sandboxes, full support for feature branches, full support for initiative type projects. Um, so far, uh, the, the testing infrastructure only supported passes over the rails, which makes yeah, kind of sense from a testing perspective. But can we use this new system to do more of a review kind of thing? So, um, um, you know, for some maintainers, you might want to look at this. Coder already does that, like um, with the whole uh, string to upper things, like the whole multi by things. Drupal has aliases for that. Not necessarily fails, but you do need to tell maintainers. Does the new system support you right more levels of um, logging? 
so the default builds that came with Conduit, um, Voter did come back with three levels as opposed to just the binary pass fail. Um, the worker logic is completely pluggable. The results display and what that worker logic passes back to the Conduit node is completely pluggable. So for example, the git repo check that I, that I mentioned, it sends back uh, any issue, if it finds an issue in that you've got branch names that cannot be used by the packaging, packaging script, if you, that's a minor issue. It might be a feature branch. We'll just flag it by, by the way, if you want this, this branch name needs to be changed. If you have no branch names that can be used by the packaging script, well, that's a critical now. So we flag that as a critical alarm and pass back minor names that are critical things as opposed to just the pass back. And then those get wrapped up into the summary message, which is passed off to Drupal.org and displayed to the end user on whatever display we can build there. Thank So we don't really have the daemon level stuff because we do uh, we do base it on here's a directory and clean up and wipe out that directory. There isn't some there isn't a mechanism right now to clean up any daemons that we might have started running. Um, but what we could potentially do is build a dedicated test bot that Where does have that daemon running or or can start it. Yeah. As long as it can use services to pull an item off of a queue, you can build a custom queue for those types of tests and make sure it's only pulling it through from those tests. So there is some potential capability there, but we don't have it out of the box for, for days. The question does remind me of another thing uh, that I did not mention is on the worker itself, uh, there is a daemon that runs in the background testing its own sandwich so that when jobs fail, it detects that it's failed, it sends a fail result, and then cleans up after itself and resets the environment. That's something you don't have with current test bots, and it causes no end of trouble. So, thank you for that, also that reminder. Um, any other questions? Okay, so with that, uh, please fill in the session evaluation, and uh, Hopefully, I've created a little bit of excitement about some of the features this can do and, and, and encouraged a couple people that on those days when you're working in V8 Core and you're just getting fed up and you need a little break, uh, we're more than happy to welcome you over to the testing infrastructure. So, uh, thank you very much for your time and attention this morning and uh, hope to see some of you in our queues.